Hi everyone, in this video we'll talk about network security. Now the question of security only arises when there are enemies. So the classic setting which is considered in the network security world is the one in which there are two friends, Alice and Bob, and there's an intruder, Trudy. Now we assume that Alice and Bob, just to spice it up, are lovers and they want to communicate securely. And Trudy is this intruder who may intercept, delete and add messages exchanged between Alice and Bob. Now both Alice and Bob have some data that they want to exchange with each other and there is this channel through which they have to send these messages. And this channel is used for sending all these data messages as well as the control messages. We assume that Trudy can intercept any of these messages, has the capability of adding and deleting messages as well. In this setting where the channel is insecure, what we want to make sure is that Alice and Bob have the capability of communicating securely with each other. Now, who might Alice and Bob be? Actually, in the real world, there could be real Bobs and Alices who want to, uh, to communicate securely with each other. Other examples are the web browser or a server for electronic transactions. For example, online purchases that we make on different websites such as Amazon. There are DNS servers. There are also routers that exchange routing tables with each other. There are a whole number of other examples, but and I would encourage you to think of such examples that can arise in in the world of network security. So first, let us try to understand what are the security features that Bob and Alice would want. First, they would want this feature of confidentiality, which is only the sender and the intended receiver should be able to understand the content of the messages. To achieve this, what the sender does is, the sender encrypts the message. When the receiver receives the message, the receiver decrypts the message and what we would want is except for Alice and Bob who are sending these messages to each other, no other intruder, for example Trudy, is not able to understand the content of these messages. The second feature that Alice and Bob would want is authentication. Both the sender and the receiver want to confirm the identity of each other. Now when we have a face-to-face -face communication, this is pretty easy because we can just visually see the person and understand if it is the person whom we are talking to. But when we are communicating in the online world, it is not possible for the sender and the receiver to understand if they are actually receiving messages from the intended person. So authentication is a key feature that both Alice and Bob would want. The third feature that Alice and Bob would be interested in is message integrity. Now both the sender and the message want to make sure that the message is not altered in any form while it's in transit, say from Alice to Bob, or afterwards without detection. For example, if say Alice sends a message to Bob and Trudy intercepts the message and changes the message, at least Bob should be able to detect that this message has been changed in some shape or form. The fourth security feature that both Alice and Bob would desire is access and availability. That is, they would want that all services must be accessible and available at all times. It should not be possible for Trudy to prevent Alice from communicating with Bob. That is when Alice is sending messages to Bob, it should not be possible for Trudy to somehow make sure that those messages never get across to Bob. Now, we'll conclude this video by talking about what the bad guys or girls, the hackers out there are capable of. Now, the bad guys are capable of doing a bunch of things. We'll list some of them here because this is a basic video on computer network security. So first we assume that the bad guys are able to eavesdrop. That is, they're able to intercept the messages. They may not be able to understand the content of those messages if the messages have been encrypted, but they could still listen to those messages. We also believe that they have the capability of inserting messages into a connection. They might also have the capability of impersonation. That is, they can spoof the source pack address in a packet or any other field of the packet. We also assume that they have this capability of hijacking. That, they, that is, they could take over an ongoing connection by removing the sender or the receiver and inserting themselves in there in that place. The final kind of sir, uh, final kind of capability that we assume the bad guys could have is denial of service. That is, they could prevent service from being uh, actively available to the users by overloading uh, the either the sender or the receiver. Now, in this video, we talked about what are the desired features of Alice and Bob, the good guys, and what the bad guys are capable of doing. 
and in the subsequent videos we'll get into more details about network security